Hold on. I'm just gonna skip to the best part. I'm almost ready. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're discussing how Evan Peters prepared to play Jeffrey Dahmer. Honestly, I was very scared about all of the things that he did and diving into that and trying to commit to that was a, a absolutely going to be one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. For this video, we're looking at how this American actor researched the role of this Netflix series' titular monster. What did you think of Peter's portrayal? Let us know in the comments. From troubled teen Tate Langdon to cult leader Kai Anderson, Evan Peters has played a variety of disturbed characters on American Horror Story. Jeffrey Dahmer was a different beast for a number of reasons, however. Ironically, in American Horror Story Hotel, Peter's James Patrick March hosted a dinner party with several notorious killers, including Dahmer. Actor Seth Gable portrayed the Milwaukee cannibal in that show, but Peter still had limited knowledge of Dahmer when he reteamed with co-creator Ryan Murphy for this limited series. Don't I always take care of you? Don't I? <laughs> oh, I'll help you again, boy. Peters essentially went in with a blank slate, his only reference being a crime scene photo. Initially, Peters didn't even realize the apartments in the image were where Dahmer claimed 12 of his 17 victims. When the police arrived to arrest your son, well, they found various items around the apartment that indicate that your son has committed multiple murders. Most would describe Dahmer as a devilish person. While the devil part is accurate, he didn't come across as a winking devil during interviews or recorded footage. He doesn't really have the charming, mischievous smile. He's a docile, sort of aloof, and almost disassociated from what he did. Many wonder why he committed such atrocities. Speaking with Peters, Ryan Murphy gave his take on Dahmer, who Murphy sensed had a peculiar relationship to his crimes. Called and said, you know, Dahmer is interesting in that he is uh, almost regretful and has guilt and sort of confusion about what went on. We're used to seeing Peters play characters with such charisma, a quality that Dahmer lacked. To this extent, Peters plays against type as an empty vessel who won't stop what he's doing until someone intervenes. Unfortunately for the victims and their loved ones, the authorities didn't get involved until it was too late. Seriously? Ma'am. Let's lower the temperature here, okay? Peters began his research on YouTube, where he tracked down Dahmer's 1994 Dateline NBC interview with Stone Phillips, Confessions of a Serial Killer. All the, all the parts are there, and it, they make it possible to make it happen. The interview was broadcast only eight months before Dahmer was beaten to death in prison. Throughout the interview, Dahmer can come off as calm and even casual, which makes it all the more unsettling as he delves into his childhood hobbies, motives, and how he committed his crimes. I don't know, that's, it that's... became a compulsion, and it switched from animals to humans. I, I, I still don't understand it. I don't know why. Peters brings a similar soft-spoken demeanor to his performance, portraying Dahmer as a sick introvert who keeps everything on the inside and appears indifferent to his surroundings. Dahmer cited control as a driving force behind his acts. Creating my own little world where I had the final say, uh, finding the best looking guy that I could and uh, having total mastery over him for as long as I wanted. Peter's performance gets to the root of Dahmer's desire to permanently possess those he terrorized. Peter sought out other YouTube videos, including an audio interview that sounded like a psychologist or detective talking to Dahmer. In fact, he dove deep into his research, seeking out any relevant materials available. And then proceeded to read uh, biographies, and uh, I was able to read the police report and his confession. The actor noticed how candidly Dahmer spoke. When Dahmer is caught in the Netflix series, Peters delivers a similar frankness, giving up everything he knows without hesitation or concern for the consequences. Can be honest, tell you everything. Only makes sense I do everything to put an end to it. In flashbacks, Peters brings a sense of normality to Dahmer's body language and speaking manner, which helped enable him to get away from his crimes for so long. As subtle as Peters can be in the role, you feel the unnatural urges raging beneath the surface, painting Dahmer as a monster hiding in plain sight. Thanks, officers. Sorry again. Yeah, now me and him, we gotta go take a shower. You know what I mean? Yeah. I do. Sorry about that. 
After reading and watching so much, Peters had to stop himself. He told Variety, quote, at a certain point, you've got to say, all right, that's enough. You know, you need to have certain plot points because he did do these things, but you don't need to embellish them. You know, we get it. While Peters wanted to be authentic, he acknowledged that they weren't making a documentary. Peters was more interested in, quote, maintaining the idea and the through line of why you're telling the story and always having that as your guiding light. And it was so jaw-dropping that it all really happened, that it felt important to be respectful to the victims, to the victims' families, to try to tell the story as authentically as we could. Throughout the process, Peters found himself asking, where is that line? The role presented a difficult balancing act as Peters juggled naturalism with entertainment. Even when the show took liberties for storytelling purposes, Peters aspired to play Dahmer as honestly as possible. And diving into that and trying to commit to that was a, a absolutely going to be one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. Dahmer's glasses are among the creative liberties the series takes. While Dahmer indeed owned a distinct pair of aviator glasses, he didn't wear them throughout his whole trial as the show suggests, not wanting to see those he had harmed. Although this detail is off, Peter still gets Dahmer's mindset across as he struggles to make eye contact. This has never been a case of trying to get free. I didn't ever want freedom. On that note, Dahmer did sport a pair of haunting yellow contact lenses, drawing inspiration from Emperor Palpatine and the Gemini Killer from The Exorcist III. Hey, you know, I don't like horror movies, honey. They scare me. Peters also donned yellow contacts for the role, a detail that's easy to miss at first glance. Paired with a head of blonde hair and a scruffy face, Peters pulled off an unnerving physical transformation. I can try something really fun. Although Peters has played dark characters before, few of them were directly based on a real figure like Dahmer. The role thus presented one of the scariest and most difficult challenges of his career. You think I could take these with me just to read? Discussing his work on American Horror Story, Peters recalled a surreal sense of disassociation with the behavior of his depraved character. It was one of those moments where I stepped outside of myself and looked at what I was actually doing and it was kind of disgusted and horrified and was like, I've, I've become kind of desensitized to this stuff, which is really weird and, and, and kind of gross. Since Dahmer's actions are grounded in brutal reality, Peters wasn't so easily desensitized to the evils this series depicts. Peters not only had to confront Dahmer's vile acts, but also get lost inside his head. It was a challenge to try to have this person who seemingly was so normal, uh, but underneath all of it had this entire world that he was keeping secret from everybody. To do the part justice, Peters would spend long periods in dark places. It wasn't an easy shoot for the crew either. Production assistant Kim Alsup described Dahmer as, quote, one of the worst shows that she's ever worked on, noting that she was often mistaken for the only other black below the line crew member on set. Alsup has yet to watch the series, claiming to have experienced PTSD from the trailer alone. She also claimed that mental health coordinators were not present. However, Peters credited the crew for preventing him from going overboard, singling out first assistant camera Sarah Brandes. Who was just such a breath of fresh air and light, you know, when we were filming some of these horrific scenes. He also mentioned director of photography Jason McCormick, who reminded him why they're telling this story. The crew uh, was instrumental in keeping me on the guardrails. I, I, I cannot thank them enough. The series takes a nuanced approach to Dahmer, exploring how his family and the authorities contributed to his trail of debauchery. Now, I've been looking everywhere to find out who was responsible for all this, blaming everybody except myself. And it's me. I'm the one to blame. At the same time, the intent was never to paint Dahmer in a likable or sympathetic light. The showrunners chose not to tell the story from Dahmer's perspective. Even when a scene centers on Dahmer, there's a disconnect between him and the audience. You're not really sympathizing with him. You're not really getting into his plight. You're more sort of watching it, you know, from the outside. The series isn't just about what Dahmer did but also the repercussions of his actions and what those around him endured. Everybody gets their side of the story told, and it's really um, 
the Jeffrey Dahmer story is, is so much bigger than, than just him. No matter which side we see this story from, Peter's presence alone leaves us feeling on edge whenever Dahmer is on screen. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Despite these attempts not to glamorize Dahmer's story, the series has been met with a mixed reception. If you're gonna tell these stories, be aware that a lot of the people who are part of these stories are still with yes. us. And that's what I Some critics and families of the victims argued that the show capitalizes on Dahmer's crimes and forces those involved to relive the trauma. Others say it shines a light on an infamous moment in human history that's still relevant today. At its core, this is a story of deep, and systemic injustice of people who were harmed and all the ways in which society failed them. One element that most people agree on is Peter's performance, which is already garnering awards talk. It's been almost 11 years since Peter's achieved mainstream attention with American Horror Story. As fun as he was on that show, it can feel like dressing for Halloween compared to the sheer dread he unearths as Dahmer. Whatever your thoughts on the show, nobody can deny Peter's commitment and growth as an actor. Are you so nervous? No. Are you scared of the movie? Are you scared of me? <laughs> 